Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. Iron Banner is over and we are back to the usual activities. We have the Prestige Raid coming this week. We have the PC version launching next week and Bungie has reminded us of it with a brand new launch trailer for the PC. But mainly for this video I want to go over the weekly activities for this week and also my thoughts on this past Iron Banner. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Let's get into it. So let's get to this week's activities. First up, right at 2 a.m., I very unceremoniously watched Saladin vanish before my eyes, but leaving his setup behind, which was definitely very interesting. But starting with this week's Luminous Engrams, you can get your powerful gear from Clan XP, the Nightfall, Completion of Leviathan, the Flashpoint on Titan, and of course, Call to Arms, if you still have some Crucible left in you. For me, I'm actually going to be holding off on my raid completion until tomorrow when the prestige raid goes live. We still don't know what the prestige raid means for rewards, but I'm going to hold off either way. And of course, the prestige raid goes live tomorrow, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And as usual, you can expect coverage of the raid right here on the channel. Moving on to this week's Nightfall, we have the return of Exodus Crash. The modifiers this week are Prism, where the elements change periodically. And then for Time Warp this week, we have Rings. Generally, my tip for collecting Rings is to kill all of the adds in the area and then collect them all as a team, which should minimize your risk of missing any. Now, for a second, I want to move back to talking about Iron Banner, and I wanted to give you some of my thoughts on the event. Overall, I think the event was fun. The positive was that I loved knowing that I could queue into only control, it was quick to find a match, and the Iron Banner armor looked incredible. Plus, I really fell into a stride towards the end of the week with my Blink Chaos Warlock. It was super fun. But sadly, there was just too many glaring issues that really provided, shall I say, a less than incredible experience. First up, the token system. I've said it before, and it's proved to be painfully apparent during this event. The random package system should be a supplementary system, not the main way you get your stuff. With the rewards being so random, you simply weren't rewarded often enough for it to be worth it. For the most part, I queued in solo, and regardless of how well I was doing, I had a lot of losses. Regardless, I managed to turn in 35 packages with my Hunter, but I played all week long and into the weekend. I did manage to receive a full Hunter set finally, but my plans to do the same on my Titan and Warlock were sadly not realized. Seven of those 35 packages were the Fool's Remedy sidearm, my absolute least favorite gun from the bunch. And that's really my point. In a video that I'm putting together, I'll discuss my ideal changes to the game's vendor system, but what I would have loved to see is simply a few of the items directly purchasable from Saladin. Not sure why this is missing in the game. I would even pay a large number of tokens, say even 70. If not that, then at least make the endgame rewards for Iron Banner, Iron Banner gear. This is very puzzling as to why it's on the case already. And honestly, for those who have already reached the endgame and are just looking for that Iron Banner gear, it's why you saw so many people quit out of matches early. The game seemed to, without fail, match solo players with a stacked clan team, likely because it proved to be the quickest match. So when you're getting beaten into the ground, two tokens may not really be worth sticking around and having your ass handed to you. Again, at least not if your main goal is to get Iron Banner gear. I get that. And in that situation, playing 10 matches to save up enough tokens to get another Fool's Errand felt more like a consolation prize than a reward. If Bungie's only system is going to be random drops, we need more of them so that the duplicates don't matter. As for the Titan and the Warlock, I suppose I'll have to just wait till next Iron Banner, which it seems may have been their plan all along to stretch out the Iron Banner content a little bit further, so I can totally understand. But what I can't understand is reskinning the weapons. For the faction rallies, I don't care. That's how it was in Destiny 1. You would take the gunsmith, sort of quote-unquote gunsmith weapon, and make it a different paint job, different specs, different roles, and it would be a new gun. If you play Destiny 1, think of the Last Extremity versus the Hong Jury SR4. Those were the exact same gun model, but they were significantly different. Iron Banner gear, on the other hand, at least with Rise of Iron, we saw very unique gun models for that event, 
which honestly may have just been a result of the DLC that it came with being centered around the Iron Lords. But if you think back to Destiny Year 1 and Year 2, the Iron Banner weapons were reskins of other guns and we didn't complain. I think part of the issue here is that we're presented with quote-unquote new content and it doesn't contain new content. I think it's more of a psychological thing. In Destiny 1, the vendors came out at the same time as the factions, so it was sort of invisible to you. Interestingly enough, no one complains about the critical SAS fusion rifle being the same model as the main ingredient. So honestly, even though I may get some hate for this, I think the complaints are coming from people that are frustrated with perhaps the overall endgame experience and are latching onto any outlet they can to complain about it. And that's really what I want to end my thoughts on this with. I don't think the Iron Banner was a bad event, but rather a victim of the current state of the endgame. As you can no doubt since I have a lot of thoughts on this and I am putting together a video that I think will clearly illustrate what my ideas are for fixing some of these issues, so definitely stay tuned to that. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the Iron Banner. Are you looking forward to it next time? Let's discuss. Also, in case you missed it yesterday, Bungie released a brand new launch trailer for the PC release of Destiny 2 coming next Tuesday. And that, of course, is going to be a very exciting day as the Destiny 2 community grows even larger. If you want to check out the full trailer, I'll leave a link down below. Aside from that, drop a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more Destiny content. And I will see you all next time.